the USDA Bee Research Lab here has been probably in existence for pushing 100 years. We work on primarily pests and diseases because honeybees have always had a variety of things that attack them. In the U.S., in the 1940s and 1950s, we managed between five and six million colonies. And then over the 60 years, some odd years to today, we've gone through a 50% reduction in the number of managed colonies. Now that's not just bee, poor bee health. A lot of that probably has driven by economics, the fact that maybe honey prices aren't what they should be. And just, and beekeeping for a while was not as popular. So we went from five to six million to two and a half million colonies that we manage today. Honeybees are not native to North America. The European settlers brought them to North America. Since they're managed here, we have a couple of bacterial infections that have been known for a while, European and American fowl brood. They're caused by bacteria, they, they kill the brood. There's other things that can affect bee health, but in the 1980s we got two parasitic mites which came in, they were exotic, they came into North America. Uh, and since then we've had an onslaught of other things, a small hive beetle and things that all are teaming up to make beekeeping a bit more difficult. Between 2004 and 2006, we started seeing these unusual die-offs and we gave it this name of colony collapse disorder. Within a beekeeping operation, it sometimes can amount to 40 or 50 percent or more of the losses that that beekeeper sees. Across the nation, it's never amounted to more than about a third of the total losses that we've seen. So, um, and that may not sound like much, but we were already suffering um, a fairly high loss rate because of Roa and other parasites. And you couple, you add CCD on top of that, and it, the beekeeping became even just more more difficult. So, at its height, a few years back, it maybe was accounting for about a third, or maybe up to half of the bee losses we were seeing. It's somewhat diminished of late, uh, but it still can be a serious issue. I don't know if I should do this, but yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you why. I, well, you can you can keep filming. Um, there was a we had about seven to ten people from around the country. And we met several times at national meetings, and we were, it was a working group. Colony, well, it wasn't named to that. It was just a working group trying to understand these bee losses. We're on a phone call, and we had various things that we'd all put for, forth as far as a, a name for it. It had been called May disease, fall dwindling, spring dwindling, all these kinds of things. And we needed a name that kind of captured it. So we went back and forth, and I actually named it. So. <laughs> No, I mean, I, we kept going colony collapse, whatever, and I, I came up with a colony collapse disorder, and in hindsight, I wish I'd said colony collapse syndrome, because it's, syndrome kind of captures it better. It helped grab the public's attention, and, and to me, the benefit of all that is that the average person now knows that bee health is not what it should be, and, and they, they're concerned about pollination and food supply. Native bees are certainly part of the pollination guild that's out there. As you get larger and larger orchards or larger and larger fields, you often need a mobile pollinator. So you need something like a honeybee that you can move to these large acres. So there's a, a, a scale issue there. Um, certainly in areas where you have small farms and small diverse habitats, the native bees may be doing the majority of the pollination. A lot of people want to know, what, what's a positive message? What can I do? And so we always talk about, well, become a beekeeper is one option. Also, increase diversity. Plant things in your backyard that are pollinator friendly. In urban areas, even in the rural environment, Beekeeping has become a very popular hobby. And yes, the bottom line is it does supply local pollination needs. I would think even more so in a city environment because in a city environment you might have community gardens and things like that. And you have so much pavement that you're not gonna get the native pollinators there that you need. So having honey beekeepers in those areas is probably vital to, to producing local food and produce. We've done a little bit of comparison of urban beekeeping versus just outside the same city. This was Washington, D.C. And it looked like the pollen stuff coming in in the urban environment in the city was even more diverse than out in the countryside. So maybe it's just because of all the people's gardens and flower gardens and things, but the bees were doing very well in the city. So you'd think, oh, city's not the best environment. You'd be amazed at what's out there, and the bees, of course, can find that.